most of us were so traumatized in one way or another, it's really hard and difficult to get clear on what's ours and what's not ours. Hello and welcome to Self Talk. I'm your host, Rachel Astarte. Today, my guest is Timothy Stutz. He has written more children's stories than anyone currently alive, 88 to date, with more on the way. Using fairy tales, ancient arts, sacred sciences, and everything in between, he empowers people of all ages to develop and use their infinite soul powers to achieve their full potential. Welcome, Timothy. Oh, it's wonderful to be with you, Rachel. So I'd love to start out by, um, and we're, we're going to talk about uh, some perhaps dark stuff here, um, as we, we're not necessarily talking about children's stories, but they may come into it. We're actually going to be talking today about generational and collective trauma and and our own, you know, thinking of ourselves as children and how that might affect us. Um, but before we get into the nitty gritty of what we're going to talk about, I would love if you would share with the listeners how you came to do what you do. <laughs> Magic. <laughs> I I graduated from college as a certified uh, as an accountant and became a certified public accountant. And then I transitioned into opening a chocolate shop based upon something I woke up saying in the middle of the, as soon as I woke up in the morning. And it was in that chocolate shop that I received a shipment of bears that I did not order. And anyway, it's a long story, but I put together, I, I used to love to write um, poetry, love poetry and philosophical poetry, commenting on society. And so I took that little bear, packaged it with a book of my poetry. And when I got it all ready to sell, my mom took one look at it and said, that should have been a children's book. And I said, you haven't read my poems, mom, there's nothing for children in there. <laughs> but that planted a seed and somehow six months later the first story just popped into my mind and the character of that little bear that i had used for the adult poetry transformed into blissberry bear mm. and also at that same time i was going through my own transformational process and knew i needed god gave me some very clear messages including a gun pointed at my chest that it was time to leave the world of business and certified public accountant and my body got pretty sick and one thing led to another and I found meditation and Reiki and then that led into Tai Chi and Qigong. <laughs> so yeah. that, that's kind of how I got into all those things. There's nothing that I went searching for, really. It was like it just all mm -hmm. flowed into my life. Yeah, right. And so I guess that's a good transition into trauma i mean to have a gun <laughs> pointed to your chest is a fairly traumatic experience and as, as you mentioned um your body reacted to that got got sick you know or or wasn't functioning the way that it needed to and so shifting your your spiritual practice in a way helped it sounds like well i had i wasn't even in a spiritual practice at that time mm. um or just starting, it's hard to remember back 40 years ago sometimes how things flowed together. Mm -hmm. um, but what that event did do was make me realize that I needed to get into my heart and follow a different path. Yeah. 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 Which and, one could say is, is a spiritual path. Of... And it was traumatic enough to make me um, go home, get my goods out of where I was living in my grandparents' house, lock the door, and not go back for one month. <laughs> wow. Basically just disappeared, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, so you also help to empower people. Is it is it through the books that you're helping 
people to get in touch with their their infinite soul and and achieve their full potential? Do you do coaching? How does that work? I do both. One of them's through the children's stories. Um, they're they're as much for the adults as they are for the children. Mm-hmm. Um, because I had to read a lot of stories to my child. <laughs> there were some stories I didn't like reading. Uh-huh. So one of the things that's always in the back of my mind when I'm writing is that I'm writing for the inner child in all of us. Yeah. And to stimulate that creativity and joy and wonder and to remind adults that we all have that inner child within us that needs love, needs attention, things that it might not have received as a child. Mm-hmm. And then I do I do courses. I have a sacred parent magical child course and a Mm-hmm. Magical Miracle of You self-empowerment course for children and families. And I also teach, um, I have a quantum energy training academy, one for teenagers and one for adults, so that they can learn how to teach meditation, Tai Chi, Qigong, and Reiki, and especially for teens in this day and age. They can actually take that course and have a way to go out into the world and support themselves mm-hmm. as they're 18 years old. Yeah. That's uh, when I was visiting your website, that was one thing that really struck me. So many coaches work with adults only. And you are talking about, you know, having parents and children take your courses at the same time and together as a family. Um, And and again, this this other training to be able to uh, make that available to teens is really helping with with their own empowerment at a time when they may be really unclear about anything that's going on in their lives yeah. yes yeah i and, mean it's and, it's and and it's so important to um work with family units mm-hmm. because you know i found with my own daughter that my daughter some of the biggest lessons i've learned in my life were from my daughter from the moment she was born you know up until whenever um, things mm-hmm. that she said and things that she taught me. So I was willing to learn from her. And, you know, as adults, as parents, if we're willing to learn from our children and guide them and see their talents and guide them to where they need to be and teach them to be safe and all those things, mm-hmm. they can remind us of our inner love and our inner joy and our innocence and things we could we kind of lost touch with in society right and and part of that to to do these beautiful things as a parent we need to do that inner work ourselves first or at least uh simultaneously you know because we're never really finished with our work right it, it's <laughs> it goes on and on um but let's let's talk a little bit about childhood trauma and how it might affect um uh, how it might affect us in the long run. So I'm I'm imagining listeners who are parents who think this sounds great, but I'm I'm so wounded, I'm not sure I would be able to be fully present for my child right now. So if you could speak a little bit to childhood trauma and how it affects people as as adults. Yeah, well to that point that you just made, if we're conscious and aware enough to be aware that we are triggered, Mm -hmm. that something is off, you know, we can stop ourselves, take a few breaths. And if we have to go learn something, we go learn it. You know, we realize maybe there's a missing puzzle piece there that didn't get filled in. Mm -hmm. And we can take that opportunity to realize that. And, you know, it's, I worked with a lady, I traded treatments with this lady um, at one point in time, and she really wanted a closer connection with God. And I didn't know that at the time we started working with one another. And the first time I went into her house, I mean, beautiful environment, it felt wonderful. But the first time I walked into her bathroom and turned the light switch on, something didn't feel so wonderful. It felt really strange. Mm And it was months later during a treatment, what finally arose from her was that when she was a little child, she was afraid of the dark. And so she'd get up out of bed and she'd go tell her mom she was afraid of the dark and mom got tired of this. Mm -hmm. So 
mom's solution was to tell her, do not come out of your room. Just turn the light switch on and God will be there for you. So the little girl did that. And she turned the light switch on. She didn't see God. She saw her room. And that happened over and over again. Well, from what I understand, once we do something a couple of times, it gets ingrained in our subconscious. Mm -hmm. So from that moment on, every time that little girl, that teenager, that adult switched on a light switch, her subconscious was saying, God does not exist. Mm. And once that came up and she saw that, that changed her relationship with God immediately. Mm. And that was my own, my own, that was the, um, that something similar was the core of why my body got sick. And I started looking for different alternatives. And what I realized as a child, every time things did not go right, which was a lot, <laughs> I lived in a dysfunctional family. Mm -hmm. I said, I want to die. Mm -hmm. So I carried that forward. And every time something went wrong in my life, my subconscious is saying, I want to die. Mm -hmm. Well, my body eventually, when I was in my early 30s, had heard that enough and decided, OK, let's do this. <laughs> sure. But sure. once I saw that, I switched it immediately and my body responded immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds so simple. What's the kind of, and, and you don't have to go into terribly detailed specifics here, but how does one switch that? That I mean, working with the subconscious is, is a very, um, very deep thing. So how does um, one switch that, that belief that's so deep? Hi, it's Rachel here. If you'd like to dive deeper into your own self-development, but you're looking for an alternative to traditional talk therapy, I think you'll love the Foundation of Self Immersion program. For a full year, you'll get dynamic coursework you can complete on your own time, plus weekly coaching calls and monthly one-on-one -on -one sessions with me for personal support. Visit foundationofself.com and click on the events page for more information. That's foundationofself.com. Now, back to the episode. Because we haven't seen it before, and once it comes to our consciousness, mm -hmm. you know, it's like turning on the light switch. It's been hiding in the dark for so long, and now we turn the light switch on it, and it doesn't exist anymore. It's no longer dark there. Mm -hmm. So there may be some things that carry over a little bit, but we really don't have to do much other than see the source of it and say, I don't want to live like that. that that's right. that's the decision I want to make now. Mm -hmm. And so then the next logical question is, how do I change my life? How do I change? What needs to change? Right. Is the, what what comes up for you when people say, OK, I, I've seen the light, but it's very difficult to undo all of this patterning. Yeah. We can do practice. We can do practices like Reiki and Tai Chi and Qigong and chanting and praying and meditating and all of those things start to switch our entire consciousness and our way of being. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I never went to look to write children's books. I never thought I would be following a meditation path or teaching Reiki and Tai Chi and Qigong. Just they let one thing led to another. Mm -hmm. Um. I just kept my focus on finding out who I was. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and doing what came along and felt, even if it didn't feel good, you know, sometimes you know, I was like, I went to military school. I came out of college and was a certified public accountant, you know, meditation, Tai Chi, Qigong, Reiki, all of this stuff was not in my wheelhouse. <laughs> yeah. That's a big leap. So I think if we just focus our it's as simple as focusing on our heart. Mm -hmm. You know, our heart has a mini brain in it. Yeah. And if we focus on our heart and learn how to ask our heart questions, it will guide us and it will give us an answer that is appropriate for us in the moment, not wanting to harm us. Mm -hmm. It's not a polarity organ like the brain that weighs this and weighs that. And this is positive and this is negative. 
you know, it literally just has our best interest at heart. Hmm. And, you know, listeners can do something as simple as bringing your hands to your heart. And then you ask, dear heart, is my name? And you say somebody else's name other than yourself. And you tune into your feelings. It may, your body may sway back and forth. You may hear something, but you just tune into what that no feels like, because that's not your name. Mm -hmm. And then you repeat the same thing with your name. And there will be a different vibration, a sensation, a feeling. Right. And you can, so then you can use that no matter what. You know, pick a food that you don't like. Say, dear heart, is this food good for me? Do I like this food? You'll get a no. Right. So you pick things that you know are no's, you know are yeses, and you can start tuning into how your body and your heart are speaking to you. And then you can use that for everything. Mm -hmm. It makes life much simpler. Yes. Yeah, we we often forget that that process uh, of interoception where we are we are feeling into the 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 felt sense of our body um, is is so important, and we often forget how important it is for us to have the holy trinity, as I call it, of mind, body, and spirit aligned. Right? We forget that our bodies are um, are our allies. Even when they're ill, we can speak with our bodies and it can and our bodies can speak with us. And to consult that first before we try to make all the decisions up here. Because this is the thing that'll say, I've been <laughs> traumatized my whole life. How do you expect me to just snap out of it? Well, you know, of course, we just said it doesn't happen overnight. But I, I love what you're saying is is get a sense, get a felt sense of how your body changes how the feelings change as you ask it certain information and and um almost using the body as an oracle you know to to help guide you it's beautiful so yes and, yeah. and we can and we can let go of any ideas of how long change takes mm. um i've done some very powerful energy work on people and in the long practices but i used to give demonstrations and people would come up and they'd get on a table for a 20 minute demonstration of something that would take like a two and a half hour process to do in its full. And in those 20 minutes, I literally watched one lady move through 40 years of trauma. It was gone instantly. Wow. Wow. I mean, my mom, when she was 80, she wanted to go to Disneyland for her 80th birthday. And she took me there on opening day. Mm. And my mom had a nasty streak in her that she had never been able to let go of. I mean, it was a really nasty streak that would pop up every now and then. I would say even bordering on evil sometimes. Mm. The whole time we were at Disneyland, all she cared about was, was everybody with her having fun. The next day she woke up and my mom was a different person. Mm. All of that nastiness left and it never reappeared, not even for a second. Mm. So God's grace works in many miraculous ways. Mm, yeah. My father disowned me at one point in time because I confronted him with some childhood trauma. And so literally for eight years, my father would not speak to me, would not even acknowledge that he had two sons when he was with places with my brother. Wow. I mean, he would come visit my grandmother and sit there and talk to her and not even acknowledge I was in the house. Um, and then one day, after I came back from a meditation retreat, I was meditating in the morning. My father appeared to me in meditation and basically said, I'm going into the hospital for surgery. Hmm. I called my father that day. From the moment he picked up the phone, I was his best buddy. It was like those eight years did not exist. And they disappeared completely. All of that melted for the rest of his life. Wow, that's amazing. So, you know, we when we do our own practices, when we hold steady with ourselves, that ripples throughout our family, throughout generations, and it heals it. Mm -hmm. And magically, they get the benefit of all the work 
in the practice right. we're doing. <laughs> right. I mean, that's beautiful. That happens. And, you know, that then there's our, our gener- intergenerational trauma because we know our parents um, have their own trauma that they've carried. And, and, you know, and more and more studies are being done about the the actual genetic changes that happen from generation to generation. Um, and to be able, as you said, once we do our own work, there is a ripple effect. Um, now, I want to make it clear that it doesn't always happen that way, <laughs> that sometimes uh, people that are close to us do not change. Um but that's not really our concern. It's beautiful right. when it happens. I love both those stories you told. Um, but sometimes I think, and I have witnessed this with my with my own clients, that sometimes there's even a, a little shift, which is great, right? If you've got a difficult parent that you're having trouble communicating with, and then all of a sudden they're a little warmer or they're a little more open, that's big. Yes. Right? But that all comes from here. Right. All comes from our own inner work, um, our self work. So what about collective trauma? What about when we talk about just humanity in general and all of the pain and trauma that whether it's um, certain ethnic groups or women versus men or, you know, when we talk about collective pain and trauma, mm. is it is this the same process or or what are your thoughts about that? I wish I had the key to that. <laughs> I wish I had the key to that. I ask myself all the time. And I really do think that's working on ourselves mm-hmm. and sharing our own paths, just like you and I are talking right now. Yeah. And it wakes people up. And yeah. That's the only way to wake people up is that one, they have to be ready to hear it. Yes. And, you know, and it's like you said, some people are so traumatized that they're not going to wake up mm-hmm. if if there's just a little light bulb that goes off. Mm-hmm. And it might not go off in this lifetime. Mm-hmm. But whatever we share with people. It heals on a very deep level, even if it doesn't manifest for them in this current life. Mm -hmm. So it makes their transition easier. It makes what they have to do beyond that easier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So, yes, society right now has got itself in a very collective traumatized position. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. For sure. But Um, I think what I'm hearing from you is, is we have to really all we can really do is start with ourselves and exactly. and and understand that you know we need to get this clean and clear which is um in my practice i call that building a foundation of self and so that that's your your solid ground to stand on as you at, rightly say you're rippling out that energy um to to the world around you and that's so important yeah, and that's and, and that's not an easy step to get to is honoring ourselves because we've been most of us were so traumatized in one way or another. It's really hard and difficult to get clear on what's ours and what's not ours. Mm-hmm. So right. I mean, we can put ourselves down. You know, I've I've been in close relationships with people that had multiple personalities, and it took a long time to figure it out. And I had to make very sure it wasn't my stuff that I wasn't picking up on things. I so yeah, it's it's not it's not easy. And there is a collective process going on. Mm-hmm. And you know, many, many of us are when my daughter was in the hospital, you know, she was hit by a car, she's she recovered. But I was stand, I spent every night with her in the hospital when she was in a coma and as she came out. And I was standing in front of the mirror one morning shaving. And all of a sudden, the little girl across the hall who came in the night before, it was like they had a football homecoming party for her. And that morning, the morning of her surgery, there was nobody there with her. Mm. And I sensed that. I sensed everything that little girl was feeling being alone. And I also realized that 
I was sensing a lot of things going on in that hospital and a lot of other rooms. Mm. And I told myself, and I remember telling myself, I can't do this anymore. I can't heal the world subconsciously as right. an empath. You know, it's like, I'm not going to take on anybody's stuff anymore. You know, I'm going to focus on me. Mm -hmm. And when I can help other people, that's fine. But I'm not going to take it on on energetic levels. Yes, that's so important. Having those those energetic boundaries for ourselves um, really helps us to be able to retain the energy for when we when we do choose to use it, as opposed to having it taken right. from us. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's hard enough too because thoughts are energy, and if we have you know th that the concept of voodoo dolls is really real, and it doesn't even have to be a voodoo doll. You know, if you've got a person that really doesn't like you and they're putting out those vibes all of the time, you know, you've got to be strong in yourself to not take those on. Yeah. Because they can get through and they can actually harm physically. Mm -hmm. So by staying in our own center, by breathing, doing whatever practices we do to infuse ourselves with love and light and peace, mm -hmm. you know. The, that's a natural force field from all of that beautiful yeah. that that's one thing people really who are empaths and are open need to tune in when something's going wrong is this mine yeah you yeah know, I, that's, is that's... somebody else projecting and then tune into that and clear it mm -hmm. great yeah that's wonderful advice as we close out um what is what is one thing that you wish everyone could know if you could just plant a a, a piece of knowledge into every brain every human brain what would it be pick whatever name of god resonates with you even love even peace mm -hmm. whatever vibration resonates with you and repeat it all of the time when you're not having to focus on anything else. And just keep repeating that, repeating that, and it shifts your entire vibrational field. It will take care of a lot of problems <laughs> on all levels, mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been in so much pain several times in my life for 12 to 24 hours that I wanted to die. Mm -hmm. And all I did was repeat the mantras that I use. And within 12 or 24 hours, it would all disappear like nothing had ever happened. Wow. Amazing. So I know it, I know it works on all levels. And it's so simple to do, just reminding ourselves to make it a habit to keep those vibrations going in our minds instead of. I'm worried about this. I'm worried about that. Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? Change the chatter up there, you know, yeah. make it high vibrational. Beautiful. That's goes very well with self-talk. The name of this podcast, change yes. the chatter. I love that. <laughs> um, Timothy, how can people find you online? Uh, website is www.timothystutz.com. And I have a freebie yeah. section in the menu that has more more freebies than most people have offerings so <laughs> there's something there for everybody from fairy tales to songs to qigong exercises to courses on grief and um, guided meditations meditations i've used to empower myself and people mm -hmm. can check those out and there's a there's a free webinar training for parents of young children called three magic wands for happier more creative, empowered children, which is a wonderful thing for anybody of any age. Beautiful. All right. And I'm going to have all of these links in the show notes so people can um, can check you out there. Timothy Stutz, thank you so much for being on Self Talk today. Thank you, Rachel. Love being with you. Hi, this is Rachel Astarte from the Self Talk Podcast. 
I'd love for you to send me your emails with questions or stories about yourself. What are you looking for? What are your questions? What, what are you grappling with in your own personal life that has to do with your identity, with yourself, with your very existence? These are the things that we're going to talk about during the podcast. And go ahead. It's all right. Get deep. I can handle it. So send them to Rachel at selftalkpodcast.com. And I'll see you on the next episode.